This is Crucial's latest and greatest PCI Gen 5 M.2 NVMe SSD, the T710. While the box claims peaks of 14.5 gigabytes per second, Crucial's website claims 14.9 gigabytes per second on reads and 13.8 gigabytes per second on writes, with the box seemingly quoting the existing T705 speeds and the website quoting a slight improvement. Let's take a look at this thing and see if it's worth the premium price tag. I should note that this comes in either 1, 2 or 4 terabyte capacities and either with or without a heatsink. I've got the 2TB SANS heatsink version, which is likely what I would opt for should I be splashing out for one of these, as most motherboards have pretty massive heatsinks built in now, so having a heatsink on the drive itself normally just kind of gets in the way of that. I should note that it did get a little toasty, even with a big motherboard heatsink, although that was after writing the entire drive's capacity in one shot, which I think is, well, pretty expected. Still, you will want a heatsink, be that on the drive itself or on your board with this one. The drive itself is a standard 2280 M.2 M key drive with Crucial's recent minimalist black design, at least on the sticker. It's single-sided, which is a change from the T705, which was double-sided, and a peek under the sticker shows that for the first time in a while, I actually have a drive that has a DRAM cache. This 2TB model has two of Micron's latest G9 276-layer TLC NAND flash packages. Assumedly, the 4TB model has two 2TB packages versus two 1TB packages here, and I would guess two 512GB packages to maintain the speed on the 1TB model. You do also get a Silicon Motion SM2508 controller, a 5 core 1.2 GHz 6 nanometer chip with four ARM uh, Cortex R8 cores and a Cortex M0 on the side, which is notably higher end than Fizen's E26 controller. Plus, of course, you have the DRAM cache, which I think is either 12 or 16 gigabytes on this 2 terabyte model. The uh, D8 in the part number appears to be Micron's way of saying it's either 96 or 128 gigabits, but I'm not entirely 100% sure on that. Anyway, the most interesting thing about this drive for me is, at least compared to the existing T705 from Crucial, is the power savings. This thing draws 8.25 watts under load versus 11.25 watts in the T705, which is a marked improvement, I think mostly thanks to that newer controller. That's an impressive reduction. So that's the specs, now let's take a look at the performance. Now this is only the second PCIe Gen 5 SSD I've had in, with the only other one being Crucial's lower end T510, which is a DRAMless of mid-performance Gen 5 drive. So when looking at the sequential crystal disk mark results, it's obvious to see that this thing is the fastest I've ever tested. It doesn't quite hit the 14.9 gigabits per second claimed, although no drive does. It does break 14 gigabytes per second though, which is certainly impressive, with writes up at 13.3 gigabytes per second. That's nearly twice as fast as a good Gen 4 drive. With a Q depth of 1 instead, you do see less performance, around 9.5 gigabytes per second on reads and 10.3 gigabytes per second on writes, but that's still worlds above the Gen 4 drives. There really isn't much competition. Where it really gets interesting is with a random 4 kilobyte block and a Q depth of 32, as the T710 is only a fraction faster than the T510, which itself is bested or beat handily by a number of Gen 4 drives. This is the interesting thing about increasing the overall bandwidth. It doesn't intrinsically improve every metric, and it's still functionally the same sort of NAND flash at the end of the day. With a Q depth of 1 though, things make a tiny bit more sense with the T710 up at the top, although only leading by the, uh, the DRAMless P310 by 1 megabyte per second on writes. It is the only drive to break well past the 100 megabyte per second mark on reads though. AS SSD has the T710 back up at the top with a sequential test, although as is common with AS SSD, the results are a good bit lower than Chris or Dismark at 10.6 gigabytes per second on writes and 10.1 gigabytes per second on reads. Interestingly, slightly faster writes than reads here. 
The gap to the T510 is smaller, but it's still a resounding victory for the T710, of course. With a random 1KB block size, the T510 and T710 actually swap places on writes, admittedly only by 5MB per second, but still, although the T710 still has pretty strong, uh, a pretty strong lead in the reads. With 64 threads though, the same test is even more strange. The T710 sits in the middle of the pack with, well, fairly middling write performance, but damn those are some strong reads. This clears the next fastest drive in reads by a full gigabyte per second, matching the fastest drive I've tested on writes, which as you can see is no mean feat. Finally, for the synthetic benchmarks anyway, we have a TTO disk benchmark, and I think it's pretty clear which drive is the fastest here. The T710 doesn't suffer from the same sort of lagging performance as the T510. In fact, I would argue it holds a convincing, if pretty tiny, lead over basically every other drive I've tested with the higher available bandwidth really coming available with block sizes of larger than 64 kilobytes. Interestingly, ATTO only gets around 14.2 gigabytes per second on reads and 13.6 gigabytes per second on writes, so again, a touch lower than the claimed figures, although that isn't all that surprising, it's just worth noting. As for file transfers, I tried setting up a RAM disk to copy files from, and to my surprise, the best that I saw was a stable 4 gigabytes per second or so. Whether that's down to the RAM disk, Windows, or this drive itself, it is pretty hard to say, and even copying from a very fast Gen 4 drive was only around 3 gigabytes per second or so, which is a little slower than I guess I would be expecting from that drive. What's more impressive to me though is when de duplicating around 100 gigabyte worth of files on the drive itself, we're still getting around 3.3 gigabytes per second despite hammering reads and writes simultaneously. That's faster than the T510, although not by all that much, only 300 megabytes per second or so. That lack of difference was actually quite surprising to me, as even if you were to go with like half the sort of your total bandwidth, uh, the write performance, you would still be talking about 6 gigabytes per second or so, not 3.3. Again, it's hard to say for sure why, but it is still damn fast. As for the SLC caching, that's where this thing is pretty impressive. After around 300 gigabytes or so, the performance drops to around 2 gigabytes per second, but that's where it stays for the entire size of the drive. That is damn impressive. Temps did creep up with uh, up to the thermal throttling point of 75 degrees Celsius, but they quickly came back down after the torture test was over. The biggest catch for the T710, for me anyway, is that while this is undoubtedly a fast drive, possibly the fastest around right now, why do you need this much speed? I mean, it's clearly faster than the system can keep up with, and I think that uh, so sort of, I can't think of a genuine use case where this much speed would make a single modicum of difference. Even with Steam's insane compression, your internet is already likely slower than even a Gen 4 drive can install games, and games don't load any faster on this. Even when direct storage finally rears its head in some games, I don't think this is going to make much of a difference compared to a Gen 4 drive, so why bother getting this thing? That question becomes especially poignant when you hear that this thing is £234, which is £50 more than the T705, which only boasts a 0.4 gigabyte per second lead according to Crucial. Crucial's own T500, a fast Gen 4 drive, is only £114 for the same 2TB capacity, which just seems unfathomably better value. I can't really understand why you would spend literally double for this T710 when there are endless Gen 4 options that will do the job just as well. Of course, that is me, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. Would you opt for this rather pricey op but undoubtedly fast option, or would you pick something on the cheaper side? Let me know in the comments down below.
I will leave a link to this in the description if you are interested. Maybe the pricing comes down in the future as well, so if you're watching this a little bit later, have a look. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos on the end cards. And if you want to check out my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools, those are available at osrtt.com, linked in the description too. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.